Hi, everyone. Okay, it is still March 21, 2021. I hope to get through these articles quickly, though. Yeah, I shouldn't even say that because so much enters my mind, and once I get started, I can't seem to stop talking because, well, so much is going on. I feel, you know, compelled to post it. Why? Why do I feel compelled to do this? I don't understand, but I do, and therefore I am, I guess. <laughs> Might be the reason for my existence. Oh, yes, it is. It has become the reason for my existence. But let's go through this. What I want to get to and play is this. Is a mass psychosis the greatest threat to humanity. Yeah. Academy of Ideas. I have said this before. I'll say it again. I, I believe that Academy of Ideas is, if it is not the best, it is one of the best channels on YouTube. Why? Because they post or he posts uh, information that makes you think, makes you think about yourself. Uh, you might, if you are inclined, reevaluate you, but you also put it, uh, it's, you put it together, the you, the individual, with the collective, you know, our societies. Oh, boy. Everything that we do has a ripple effect. And that effect goes out into the greater society. Why are we living mass psychosis? Because we have an awful lot of individuals who are not living in reality. And, yeah, I even question my own reality. Okay, am I in it? Am I not in it in certain, you know, aspects of life? I just question. Okay, well, let's just uh, take a look at, at what is undoubtedly tyranny unfolding all over the world all over the world, in our face, and because we have a majority of individuals who behave as if they've got this psychosis going on, tyranny is coming in fast, and everyone will feel it, but a whole lot of people will justify it or will spin it and call it something else. So father arrested and jailed for contempt after referring to his daughter as she, voicing dissent in interviews, dissent with his 13-year-old daughter who came out and announced that she was a boy. And the father of a biological girl who believes she's a boy turned himself into a Canadian court and was subsequently taken to jail after the Attorney General of Br British Columbia issued an arrest warrant for contempt after the father had insisted on referring to his daughter as his daughter and used the pronouns she and her. Uh, Robert Hoglin from Surrey, British Columbia, has a 14-year-old daughter. In February 2019, the Supreme Court of British Columbia, Canada, ordered that the girl receive testosterone, testosterone injections, testosterone injections. She's 14. Without obtaining parental consent. How could anybody think that that is okay? How could anybody in their right mind 
think that that's okay. But this is what's happening in Canada. The court also declared that if either of her parents referred to her using female pronouns or addressed her by her birth name, they would be considered guilty of family violence. Yeah. When she was in seventh grade, the girl's school urged, urged the girl to see psychologist Dr. Wallace Wong, who recommended the girl should begin taking cross-sex hormones at 13. Whoa. All right. Uh, these uh, cross-sex hormones have a whole lot of adverse effects, but the effects, some of them are permanent. A 14-year-old, now many of these kids kind of grow out of thinking that they're the opposite sex, and there's an awful lot, awful lot of videos on YouTube of these kids who get lacrosse sex hormones at a very young age and then are really upset about the fact that they went through that treatment because they just wanted to return to their natural biological sex but they were stuck well the women stuck with having to shave uh, with a very very low voice Okay, we know what's going on, but you don't have to know the details of what's going on. You don't really have to know that there's a deliberate agenda to this. What you need to know is that this is not okay to do. You don't strip away parental rights at all, but you sure don't strip them away to a point where you're going to be giving a medical treatment to a 13 or 14 year old and you parents too bad for you anybody in their right mind who could think that that's okay is really well psychotic uh, there is i'm sorry there, there, there oh boy her son missed remote school, so police showed up with a $439 fine. The punitive truancy policies, okay, her son could not connect. It was Zoom. Couldn't connect to Zoom. And now she's fined. They could be prosecuted. Are you kidding me? How is it that we are allowing this to occur? Yeah. How missing Zoom classes could funnel kids into the juvenile justice system. And why some experts say now is the time to reform truancy rules. I cut class starting in first grade. Now... You get the police coming, parents are jailed. This was happening before COVID, but now you miss a Zoom class and the police show up at your door. Mayor de Blasio, New York City, tells New York Police Department to pay people home visits for hurtful comments. Hurtful comments. People can't see the tyranny. You write something that somebody considers hurtful on social media. Knock, knock. NYU asks, with which gender do you identify? Select all that apply. All that apply. Okay, a gender. Um, Aaliyah gender, by gender, boy, 
Bo boy, moi, bois, butch, demi boy, feminine, of center, femme, gender apathetic. <laughs> okay, gender non conforming, gender questioning, gender fluid, gender queer, gray gender, gray gender. Is that the elderly? Intergender. Man. Oof. I'd be scared if I were a man. I'd be scared to just put down man today. And don't say you're white. Masculine of center. A maverick. Multigender. <laughs> I thought this said neurosis. Nu neutros. Nu neutrois. Okay. Non-binary, novi gender, trigender, third gender. There's a difference between trigender and third gender, I guess. Trans feminine, transgender, transmasculine, two spirit, pangender, polygender, woman. Something wrong with our society? Classic Monopoly game is about to get a woke upgrade. Community chest. Cards to be updated with feel-good moments. Yeah. So, community chest, remember? Players draw a card, results in financial rewards or penalties, sends a player to jail or gets a jailbird out of the clink for free. Well, Hasbro has gone woke with Monopoly because they believe that the cards no longer match what they perceive as their, as their customers' cultural priorities. All right. So the new cards are all about sending a message about the importance of being woke. Cards will lecture you on the importance of volunteering, community involvement, not upsetting your neighbors, giving blood, rescuing puppies, shopping local, recycling, and even naming bugs. And you can go to, you can go to Monopoly, the community chess challenge, and you could vote. You could vote on either or, and there is 16 of the, 16 cards. You help your neighbor bring in her groceries. She makes you lunch to say thanks. Collect $20. Meow. Your knit cozy sweaters, you knit cozy sweaters for the hairless cats at your local animal shelter. Either or. Which one? Are you going to pick? Hmm? Which one? Which one? Considering that there are very few hairless cats at the local animal shelter, I think I'd pick this one. Our world. Okay. Um, I'll link below. You can go through all 16. You volunteer your art skills and point a mural at the local school. Point or paint? I think it's supposed to be paint. Okay. You organize a group to clean up your town's walking path. You organize a bake sale for your local school. You weed the community garden and discover a new bug and give it a name. Something fun. Blasting music late at night? Your neighbors do not approve. Go to jail. You find a wallet on the sidewalk and decide not to return it, go to jail. Oh, my God. There was a time when <laughs> life was just uh, much more simple. and Yes. 
Okay, Biden's military's number one focus, not China, not Iran, not Russia, really, but promoting the rights of LGBTQ around the world. It's true. It's true. It's true. And this is interesting. Now, I've posted videos, and I think many of us, myself included, have heard Biden. Well, he... He referred to our country as a sanctuary country and welcomed in illegal immigrants. Um, Asylum signs spotted welcoming migrants who cross illegally in Texas. Cardboard, handwritten, but it is in a Department of Homeland Security sleeve. Homeland Security, welcome. You have three kilometers. You have three kilometers left to get into uh, a station where you can apply for asylum or not. You just get to stay here. So, racist Biden Biden administration says, it's simple, the border is closed. Wait, what? Uh, We sure did open it right when Biden came into town. And now we're closing it. Oh, boy. But didn't we call Trump and Trump supporters white supremacist racist for... Actually, just wanting the laws enforced, immigration laws enforced. Well, I'm not a Trump supporter, but that's what I want. And I don't care about the color of skin. I just think that we should go back to being that country, you know, ruled by law. You know, even though those who are very wealthy, they had their own, you know, special law going on. But it's never been like this. So, how come Biden's not a racist? Closing the border, kicking out people, expelling, expelling all but children. That's scary. That's friggin' scary. They're keeping the children, the unaccompanied accompanied children. Okay. So Martha Martha here, our MSM reporter, goes down to the border um, and asks somebody who's crossing it illegally, did you come here because Joe Biden was elected president? The answer, well, basically, yeah. I would never have come from Brazil during the Trump years. So, you are a racist and a white supremacist if you want immigration law to be enforced. But the whole border mess, Trump's four years, Trump supporters attacked as racist because they wanted the border closed. They wanted immigration law to be enforced. That's it. Maligned, degraded, I mean, everything in the book. So now he closes the border. Why? Because it's such a friggin' mess. Yay, the Democrats are in power. Let's go. And it got so well let's just say unruly, out of control, that now the head of the Department of Homeland Security on Meet the Press this morning says, the border's closed. We're expelling adults. Oh, man. Democrats, you really... You really need to examine yourself. So 
Biden administration considers flying migrants to states near the Canadian border. What states? Montana, North Dakota, Michigan. Because the Border Patrol up here, which is only a mile away from where I live, is less busy. And, well, things got so out of control and so many people were coming across the border that Border Patrol down north, up down south, can't process them. So fly them up and process them up here. Okay. So, U.S. House Democrats propose 4,350 earmarks a year, costing 13 billion earmarks back. Yay! What does that mean? It means these these people in the House get money and they can do whatever the hell they want to do with it. 4 1,350 earmarks for fiscal year 2022. Obama 2011 State of the Union speech said he would veto any bill containing earmarks saying the American people deserve to know that special interests aren't larding up legislation with pet projects. Both parties in Congress should know this. If a bill comes to my desk with earmarks inside, I will veto it. I will veto it. At the height of earmarking in 2005, Congress passed 15,000 earmarks at a cost of $29 billion. Boy, think about all those people who could be helped with that money. Bridge to Nowhere, Ted Stevens, Republican, Alaska. The Bridge to Nowhere, he wanted $80 million. He got, he got $80 million. To, to build this bridge to Gravina Island. <laughs> okay. It never went. What happened to the 80 million? Randy Duke Cunningham, remember? Remember these guys? Went to jail after he tearfully confessed conspiring to pass out earmarks and pocketing 2.4 million in bribes. <laughs> including a Rolls-Royce, a yacht, and a 19th century Louis Philippe commode. Okay. And Trump gives him a conditional pardon in the final days. I wonder what the condition was. Got to get rid of your commode. Dennis Hassert. And wasn't it Hassert who also was prosecuted for uh, sexual abuse of minors, I, I think, maybe. All right, used a $207 million federal transportation earmark to construct the Prairie Parkway near some newly per, uh, purchased farmland. Oh, who purchased it? Oh, uh, uh, he did. Which his trust proceeded to sell a few months later for a multi-million dollar profit. This has been going on for decades. Okay? The American people know how corrupt their Congress is. And we don't do a friggin' thing about it. So you're surprised that the corruption just got so in our face, so outrageous. Every friggin' stimulus bill, every bailout. The money goes to the top 1% or 10% every single time. And we do nothing. And more and more, you know, of the 90% get destroyed. <laughs> we just sit back, do nothing. Lobbyist Jack, Jack Ab um, Abrahoff, Abrahoff. Ah and his associates. Convicted for bribing legislators with gifts and campaign contributions for votes on earmarked funding. 3.4 million earmark for turtle tunnels under a Florida highway. 50 million indoor rainforest in Iowa. Uh, 1 million for a Woodstock museum. 
$500,000 for a North Carolina teapot museum, $273,000 for a goth culture, to study goth culture in Missouri. So we're returning. But we're calling it, well, some want to rename it, member-directed spending or community project funding. Holy shit, we're so... Watchdog group sues D.C. for autopsy results of officer who died after Capitol riot. This is the Brian Sicknick Capitol officer who mainstream media are still claiming that he was brutally beaten. Brutally beaten. I think with a fire hydrant brutally beaten, and died. His family came out and said that he had a stroke, and they don't know. They don't know how he died. He was not beaten. But mainstream media continues, continues to lie. Outright lies. So Judicial Watch previously submitted a FOIA request. Uh, to the authorities for all records, including but not limited to autopsy reports, toxicology reports, notes, photographs, yada, yada, yada. Denied. Now, FOIA, <laughs> well, if we want to turn them over, we will. But a whole lot is just denied. Or not even denied, just ignored. So, the grand jury, a grand jury, Earlier this week, indicted two men, one in Pennsylvania, one West Virginia, connection with the death of Sicknick, who died in the hours following the attack. What attack? Oh, my God. Talk about injustice, tragedy. What are the words? Complete abject evil. So Joe Biden let the National Guard sleep in garages, but buys $86 million worth of hotel rooms for illegal aliens. It's true. It's true. Yep. ICE securing hotel rooms to hold growing number of migrant families when we have so many sleeping on the streets vets sleeping on the streets, and the National Guard, who was protecting all of those very important people in Washington, D.C., slept in a friggin' garage. Americans, might you see something off here? Might you? Okay, it's true. Something's very wrong. Now, I'm just going to play Perhaps all of this, but uh, it's 28 minutes already. So maybe half of it. Click on the link below. Listen to the whole thing. This is what we're going through. And nothing will change until the individual, and of course we need them in the aggregate, to do something about their psyche, how they live life, their behavior, what they're doing, you know, how they perceive, well, okay, shatter their delusion, wake up to the reality. Now, again, please don't hit me with a copyright strike. Academy of Ideas, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I really highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. All one's neighbors are in the grip of some uncontrolled and uncontrollable fear. In lunatic asylums, it is a well-known fact that patients are far more dangerous when suffering from fear than when moved by rage or hatred. According to the psychologist Carl Jung, the greatest threat to civilization lies not with the forces of nature, nor with any physical disease, but with our inability to deal with the forces of our own psyche. We are our own worst enemies, or as the Latin proverb puts it, man is a wolf to man. 
In Civilization in Transition, Jung states that this proverb is a sad yet eternal truism, and our wolf-like tendencies come most prominently into play at those times of history when mental illness becomes the norm rather than the exception in a society, a situation which Jung termed a psychic epidemic. Indeed, it is becoming ever more obvious, he writes, that it is not famine, not earthquakes, not microbes, not cancer, but man himself, who is man's greatest danger to man, for the simple reason that there is no adequate protection against psychic epidemics, which are infinitely more devastating than the worst of natural catastrophes. In this video we are going to explore the most dangerous of all psychic epidemics, the mass psychosis. A mass psychosis is an epidemic of madness and it occurs when a large portion of society loses touch with reality and descends into delusions. Such a phenomenon is not a thing of fiction. Two examples of mass psychoses are the American and European witch hunts of the 16th and 17th centuries, and the rise of totalitarianism in the 20th century. During the witch hunts, thousands of individuals, mostly women, were killed not for any crimes they committed, but because they became the scapegoats of societies gone mad. In some Swiss villages, writes Francis Hill, there were scarcely any women left alive after the frenzy had finally burned itself out. The totalitarian experiments of the 20th century are a more recent and a more deadly example of a mass psychosis. In countries such as the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, North Korea, China, and Cambodia, it was a collective detachment from reality and a descent into delusions and paranoia that permitted the rise of the all-powerful totalitarian governments that destroyed the lives of hundreds of millions. The totalitarian systems of the 20th century represent a kind of collective psychosis, writes the medical doctor Just Mirlu. Whether gradually or suddenly, reason and common human decency are no longer possible in such a system. There is only a pervasive atmosphere of terror and a projection of the enemy imagined to be in our midst. Thus society turns on itself, urged on by the ruling authorities. When a mass psychosis occurs, the results are devastating. Jung studied this phenomenon thoroughly and wrote that the individuals who make up the infected society become morally and spiritually inferior. They sink unconsciously to an inferior intellectual level. They become more unreasonable, irresponsible, emotional, erratic, and unreliable. And worst of all, crimes the individual alone could never stand are freely committed by the group smitten by madness. What makes matters worse is that those suffering from a mass psychosis are unaware of what is occurring. For just as an individual gone mad cannot step out of his mind to observe the errors in his ways, so too there is no Archimedean point from which those living through a mass psychosis can observe their collective madness. Or as Jung writes concerning the psychic epidemic that swept through Germany under Hitler's rule, the phenomenon we have witnessed in Germany was nothing less than an outbreak of epidemic insanity. No one knew what was happening to him least of all the Germans, who allowed themselves to be driven to the slaughterhouse by their leading psychopaths, like hypnotized sheep. But what gives rise to a mass psychosis? And what makes a society susceptible to this devastating phenomenon? For an answer, we must begin at the basics. We must explain what is meant by a psychosis, and what leads an individual into a state of madness. With this information, we can then examine how this process plays out on a mass scale. A psychosis can be defined as a detachment from reality or the loss of an adaptive relationship to reality. In place of thoughts and beliefs that conform to the facts of the world, the psychotic becomes overrun by delusions, which are false beliefs considered to be true despite the existence of evidence that proves the contrary. Delusion, writes Just Mirlu, can be defined as the loss of an independent, verifiable reality, with the consequent relapse into a more primitive stage of awareness. Delusions can take many forms. Some psychotics develop delusions of paranoia and believe they are constantly being followed, tracked, and observed. 
Others, such as catatonic schizophrenics, develop delusions about their ability to alter the state of the universe merely with the movement of their body, and so remain constricted in statue-like poses. But while delusions are false in the sense of not conforming to the facts of the external world, they are considered true to the psychotic and so influence how they interact with the world and with other people. Or as Jung writes, If a man imagined that I was his arch enemy and killed me, I should be dead on account of mere imagination. Imaginary conditions do exist, and they may be just as real and just as harmful or dangerous as physical conditions. I even believe that psychic disturbances are far more dangerous than epidemics of physical disease or earthquakes. While a descent into the delusions of a psychosis has many triggers such as an excessive use of drugs or alcohol, brain injuries or other illnesses, these physical causes will not concern us here. Our concern is with psychological or what are called psychogenic triggers, as these are what usually lead to the mass psychosis. The most prevalent psychogenic cause of a psychosis is a flood of negative emotions, such as fear or anxiety, that drives an individual into a state of panic. When in a state of panic, one naturally seeks relief, as it is too mentally and physically draining to subsist in this hyper-emotional state for a prolonged period of time. To escape the fear and anxiety of the panic state, a positive or negative reaction can take place and the positive reaction takes the following form. A greater effort is called forth, writes Jung. The individual will show more strength and willpower, and will try to overcome the obstacle or the cause of misery through physical, intellectual, and moral effort. If the strength of one individual is not sufficient, he will seek the help of others. If such an ultimate attempt fails, or if an individual is too weak from the start to show fight, then a negative reaction takes place. At the extreme, the negative reaction is a psychotic break. A psychotic break is not a descent into a state of greater disorder, as many believe, but a reordering of one's experiential world which blends fact and fiction, or delusions and reality, in a way that helps end the feelings of panic. Silvano Arietti, one of the 20th century's foremost authorities on schizophrenia, explains the psychogenic steps that lead to madness. Firstly. There is the phase of panic, when the individual starts to perceive things in a different way, is frightened on account of it, appears confused, and does not know how to explain the strange things that are happening. The next step is what Arietti calls a phase of psychotic insight, whereby an individual succeeds in putting things together by devising a pathological way of seeing reality, which allows him to explain his abnormal experiences. The phenomenon is called insight because the patient finally sees meaning and relations in his experiences, but the insight is psychotic because it is based on delusions, not on adaptive and life-promoting ways of relating to whatever threats precipitated the panic. The delusions, in other words, allow the panic-stricken individual to escape from the flood of negative emotions, but at the cost of losing touch with reality. And for this reason, Arietti says that a psychotic break can be viewed as an abnormal way of dealing with an extreme state of anxiety. The American psychologist Alexander Lowen echoes this sentiment. Two factors are important in the dynamics of a psychotic break, he writes. One is an ego that is weak or insecure. The other factor is a flood of feeling that cannot be integrated by the ego. When it is understood that a flood of negative emotions, in conjunction with a weak and insecure sense of self, can trigger a descent into madness, it becomes clear how a mass psychosis can occur. A population first needs to be induced into a state of intense fear or anxiety by threats real, imagined, or fabricated. And once in a state of panic, the door is open for either the positive or negative reaction to unfold. If a society is composed of self-reliant, resilient, and inwardly strong individuals, a positive reaction can take place. But if it is composed of mainly weak, insecure, and helpless individuals, a descent into the delusions of a mass psychosis becomes a real possibility. Great stress, in other words, can bring out the best in an individual or society at large, but it can also bring out the worst 
or as the psychologist Anthony Storr writes about the potential for a mass psychosis. It is only if we accept the existence of a latent paranoid potential lurking in the recesses of the normal mind that we can explain the mass delusions which led to the persecution of witches and the Nazi slaughter of Jews. Vast numbers of ordinary men and women held beliefs about witches and Jews which, if they had been expressed by one or two individuals instead of by whole communities, would have been dismissed as paranoid delusions. There are extremely primitive, irrational mental forces at work in the minds of all of us, which are usually overlaid and controlled by reason, but which find overt expression in the behavior of those whom we call mentally ill, and which also manifest themselves in the behavior of normal people when under threat or other forms of stress. In the next video of the series, we will explore how certain ideas or what the Russian author Fyodor Dostoevsky called demons, can induce a societal-wide flood of negative emotions and therefore pave the way for a mass psychosis. Ideas, as we will learn, are so powerful that at times they can possess us, consume us, or even destroy us. Those who control the flow of information in a society, and the ideas we accept as true or false, exert a great power over the course of civilization. It was not you who ate the idea, wrote Dostoevsky, but the idea that ate you. I think this is what we are living. Mass psychosis. Another very good video. How the greater good is used as a tool of social control. The greater good, the collective, communism, socialism, or the individual. Okay. I will link below to this video, this video, as well as Academy of Ideas channel. I hope that you come over here, check out the videos. He does provoke thought. And that is a good thing. Okay. Um, we cannot get out of what we are living without the individual doing the work necessary to pick themselves up from that low road, to work on themselves, to strengthen their ego, to strengthen their own self. And if they don't do that work, we will descend further and further into darkness. And that's why we're descending so rapidly now. The tyranny is smack in our face. And people can't see it. They can't see it because they're afraid. They're afraid and they don't want to see it. So they live delusion instead of living in reality. Living delusion means they are part of the problem. Living in reality allows them to choose. Do I sit and do nothing about this reality? Or do I join the gang of conspiracy theorists? Ciao, guys.